Okay, so just want to touch on a few hard surface techniques. Um, obviously, we've got some brushes down here. The high polish I find very useful. Kind of push surface around. I've created a matte cap with reflections and zebra stripes so that I can see shape a little bit better or see what my surface is doing more things wobble also I find that sometimes the smooth and then letting go of the smooth of the shift key gives me a different polish a different polish algorithm which can be very nice it's gonna relax things a little bit differently and that's gonna allow me to sometimes get rid of little bumps where my topology is kinda of funny okay so I've got this shape and you know pinch can be a very useful tool usually when I use pinch I'll make it a lot smaller and I'll turn on my uh, lazy mouse if I'm using pinch so I want to be very careful about what exactly I'm pinching and I can focus on really getting that where I want it to be, tightening it up. Maybe up this intensity so it's a little more visible for you. And then I, if I do use pinch, I'm going to want to smooth it out because pinch is going to be really destroying my polygons by sucking them together across that edge. So. So say for some reason if I wanted to do that, it's going to be pulling those out. I can smooth things off a little bit differently and get that design line, which in this case I don't want, so I'm going to undo. All right, we'll pull back to there. Smooth that out a little bit. Okay, so other features that are down here. The clip curve is nice. I might come in and just kind of suck off some of that, the belly of this thing. Uh, I can use curves with that, so if I hit the Alt key, it will allow me to bend that clip, and it's going to basically push the geometry perpendicular to the line. A useful tool with that is if I do have a lasso, I might say I want to just flatten this area off find the edge I want and allow that to just be pushed in right there. Smooth that back off just a little bit to relax the polygons. Okay, so another useful thing is if I were to draw over the top of this, I can use uh, the standard brush Should probably just type it in there we go and turn on just RGB and draw over the top of this I am gonna smooth this up one more time so let's go let's see colorize this white and geometry divide delete lower so now at least it's you know it's hundred thousand polygons it's gonna be good enough to draw on so let's decide which direction this is going. It quite honestly doesn't matter, but... We'll go this way. We'll say this is the front of... some strange vehicle. And that's going to be the glass through here. I might want to make sure I know where... these lines are going. So I want to make sure that this line kind of bends the appropriate direction eventually. And let's just run that off the side. And maybe that's going to allow us to put one more vent in here eventually. Okay. Another thing I'm going to want to do is just kind of 
we can it's this direction. If he's going that way, he's got to have some angle. There are some cool things also, which we're going to use later on. The Alt key. If I use the Alt key, I can bend this, which is seriously useful. Um, Alt key in the middle will kind of act like this. I used to think I needed lattices for everything, and I find that this comes in very useful, very handy. Okay, so we've got this design. I'm going to go to the slice, which you can get under Shift and Control, all these different brushes, and let's lay these things in. So what happens here is, first things first, I'm going to chop off the bottom of this. And if I hold down the space bar, I can move this. Because I'm looking at that going, that's pretty cool, except for that I didn't mean for that not to be down a little lower. So, start that over. Okay, that's going to be okay. And I'm just going to hide that bottom part. And let's chop from right here. So, the tools only chop on one side and also cannot have subdivisions or you'll be upset and it won't work so let's come in here and cut that uh, is that what I want to cut? no it is not more important than that actually is going to be making sure that this window line is in the appropriate location That is kind of cool, but not it. That's pretty close. Yep. Okay. And now I'm going to slice this one. hold down the space bar to move this. And I'm going to pull a little further away because I figure it just needs to be out. Okay, I think that's going to do for right now. So what I need to do here is I need to tape these two pieces together. So select rec, grab that, grab that, and merge those. And now I need to mirror things across to the other side. So let's go in here. Mirror and weld, wrong direction, undo, mirror, and then mirror and weld. And now I've got this shape. Okay. Let's lift this up and see what we get out of it. So, a couple things that are going to be useful. If I go down to the crease, crease polygrips, it's going to give me creases across all these edges. I might want to put creases down here so things don't get messed up, but we'll leave that for right now. And I'm going to go up here to the Move tool again and just pick this because I don't really want anything back here to move and I don't want to move this line down here. So let's just mask off this just to be safe. And then I'm just going to come over here and grab this. And we'll lift this up. That can be somewhere about here. I'm imagining this line through there. Maybe take this a little bit higher. And then if I hold down the Alt key, I can bend that a little bit. And we might say that looks horrible, but actually it's not, it's fine. And so all we're going to really do now is control, click into there to mask off everything but that. And now we can smooth this and just allow that to kind of flatten to where it needs to be. Grab some clay buildup and smooth it back down. It's 
it's not too bad. And once I get it about there, I'm going to also use the Polish by Features and let that do a little bit better job than what I'm going to do. And now I also need to figure out how to fix this, so let's smooth this stuff out. I've turned off my RGB, so when I smooth, it's going to smooth better than I would. Uh -huh. Oh, I've also gone into my light box and under the smooth tab, smooth brushes, I've got the smooth crease. So what's cool about this is, let me toggle off this paint. When I smooth across here, it's going to hold all those lines that have creases in them. So anywhere where I had a crease, I get a nice tight line when I smooth to it. Okay. It's a little bit silly, but it's pretty fun. If I look in here, I can see where I've got those creases. I want to make sure they're there. Oh, other other thing that could be useful, if I need a crease to fade, say I've got a tight crease right here and I want it to fade off, if I hold down Shift and I let go of Shift, it's going to use a polish feature instead of the smooth by crease, and then I can shift it back on and just kind of push on my crease until I want it to blend off. Can hit perspective again. I mean, it's a slightly strange design, but there you go. And let's just go in here. I'm gonna if I if I wanted to use, well, let's do two different things. Yeah, if I want to cut a hole in here, or or at least push something in, it's at 99,000. It's pretty light. I'm gonna divide it one more time and just mask that shape off. And now that I've got that, we could just come back in here and toggle off perspective so I can see what's happening. Yank this shape in here. Might be the best way to go. In this case, it's not. Let's use the move brush. Whatever that shape. Do the same thing right here. And then just move all this stuff down. That's a little weird. But honestly, it's probably better to just undo some of those. Back to the beginning. And use this move brush. With the Alt key pushed down. And that's going to allow this to blend from this, this area and bend in. Let's just do that. Okay. That it's going to conclude what I need you guys to know. I mean, it's strange, but there it is.